In the unlikely event that President Trump is removed from office after the Senate impeachment trial, or if he loses in November, he will still make a mark on this country that will last for decades. Now, I'm talking about how the president has remade our federal courts. Now, this chart tells the story. Donald Trump has appointed more people to the federal bench than any of his five predecessors. And bear in mind, they get lifetime appointments. We can thank Mitch McConnell for that. The Senate Majority Leader, he refused to confirm many of President Obama's late appointments, so Trump inherited a slew of vacant seats, and he's filled them with conservatives right out of the Heritage Foundation's Hall of Fame. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction in Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, it's emblematic of the situation. Now, I've got a quote here from a piece in Slate that describes what's going on there. The Fifth Circuit's descent into lawlessness did not happen by accident. Senate Republicans would not let President Obama fill several seats on the court, allowing Trump to reshape it after taking office. He appointed five of the court's 17 active judges who immediately allied themselves with the court's existing far-right bloc, which includes extremists. Just this week, the Fifth Circuit lifted a lower court's order that blocked the administration from tapping into military funds to build the president's coveted border wall. President Trump, he didn't waste any time doing a victory lap. Sent what else but a tweet announcing the news and also boasting that the Fifth Circuit's ruling will pave the way for the administration to build one of the largest sections of the wall. I want to bring in the writer of the Slate piece I just quoted from, Mark Joseph Stern. He covers the courts and the law for Slate. You know, I gave some of the numbers, but I think this puts it into context. And again, I'm, I'm drawing it from your piece that... In the first three years of Trump's presidency, he's appointed 133 district court judges, 50 appeal court judges, obviously two Supreme Court justices, about a fifth of the federal trial judges and a quarter of its federal court judges. They're all been courtesy of Trump. He's really remade the courts, hasn't he? Absolutely. He is breaking all of the records we know. He is setting new records. Um, this is an extraordinary achievement uh, for Trump, if you admire him and his policies. It's certainly an achievement for Mitch McConnell, who spent many years setting up this moment, uh, crafting the rules uh, that would allow him to push through these judges at record speed, and of course, holding open so many of these seats under Obama, uh, hoping that a Republican would come in and fill them. That's exactly what happened. And and so now we have a judiciary that has arguably been captured by Donald Trump and Republicans in just three short years. Now, we're going to talk about the Fifth Circuit, which is the focus of your piece in a second. But Trump's also flipped the Second, the Third, the Eleventh Circuit courts just in his time. Give an idea, a 1L description for our audience. When they hear about a circuit court here, tell them how important those decisions are um, and the kind of cases that they hear. Massively important. I like to tell people that circuit court judges are probably the most important people you've never heard of. Um, the vast majority of federal court cases end at the circuit court level. So these cases are heard by trial courts, right? And then appealed up to the circuit courts. Um, and the circuit courts make a decision. Those can be appealed up to the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court takes a tiny fraction of those cases, at most about 80 a year out of thousands and thousands. So if you are a litigant in federal court, the odds are extremely high that your case will ultimately be decided by a circuit court and that will be the end of it. All right, so let's try to put a face in this. I'm going to draw some examples um, from your piece, one of which was uh, an unbelievable story re regarding prison guards and really the torture they put this inmate through, literally, where they covered his cell, or two cells, I guess, in feces. Um, everybody knew it. It came out. Um, clearly, the person couldn't either sleep, eat, or use the facilities in the time that they went through it. Yet, the court went out of their way to say there's no civil exposure for the guards, even though they acknowledge everything alleged happened. It's amazing how far they went. It's absolutely horrific. Um, you have a decision here that says very explicitly um, that courts uh, should allow guards and prisons to hold inmates in tiny, filthy cells for days at a time and actually force them to sleep naked on the floor. Uh, I mean, these are things we would not even expect out of Guantanamo, yet they are happening right here in the United States. And courts like the Fifth Circuit are saying no problem there. That is not 
unconstitutional. Guards absolutely have the power to humiliate and torment inmates. This justice, uh, uh, James Ho, uh, he's a piece of work. I mean, the more I read in your piece about some of the positions he takes, not just on reproductive rights, but also, I mean, he's right of Attila the Hun, and apparently uh, he's not out of step here with the other members in the court, or at least a lot of them. That's right. So the Fifth Circuit is a good example of Trump's takeover of the courts because there were already so many extremists on this court. Um, you know, Ronald Reagan and the two Bush presidents actually appointed a fair number of moderate appeals court judges, but very few of them went to the Fifth Circuit. Uh, George W. Bush put some real radicals on that court, and so they were already there waiting when the Trump judges arrived. Uh, and together, those do those judges all form this block that could sort of throw its weight around, overturn precedent at a rapid pace, and do whatever it wants. So you have judges like James Ho, uh, who should be really far out of step with the rest of the court, who are instead writing these awful majority opinions, stripping rights from women, stripping rights from LGBTQ people and prisoners, uh, allowing police to shoot innocent people and get away with it, um, even scorning lower court judges who uh, protect the reproductive rights of women, claiming that they hate innocent babies and want them to die. I mean, this guy is really more Bill O'Reilly than a judge on a court, um, but he has this lifetime appointment, and a majority of the Fifth Circuit is generally ready to line up behind him and support whatever he spouts. And what I took away from the piece also was they're not even attempting to disguise the partisanship here. In fact, you had one of the justices, I believe it was uh, Clement, who got angry because even though it's protocol that they randomly pick three judges uh, for the initial hearing, that the three weren't Republican appointees, and she, I guess, didn't like the decision uh, that those three judges came to and said we didn't have the right political makeup of the judges who heard the case. The, the court, apparently, they even take on the Supreme Court, um, even defying SCOTUS on abortion-related cases, where even Roberts has had to come in and, and smack their hand down. I, and the, the argument you make at the very beginning of the piece is, if there's four more years of Trump, what we see in the Fifth Circuit, you're going to see in other circuit courts, and this will be generational more than it already is. Absolutely. So remember, these judges are still going to be on the bench in the 2050s, the 2060s, even beyond. Um, and there are only more and more judges coming into these courts because uh, even if the Senate pauses for an impeachment trial, McConnell is already revving up the judicial confirmation machine again for 2020. Uh, Trump, like you said, has flipped three appeals courts already. Uh, and more importantly, he is replacing moderate conservative judges on these courts with extreme conservatives like on the Fifth Circuit. So Trump isn't just flipping seats and flipping courts from liberal to conservative. He's flipping them from conservative to ultra far right conservative, creating courts like the Fifth Circuit, which, as you said, just defy the Supreme Court when they don't like Supreme Court precedents. And if there are four more years of Trump, probably a majority of our appeals courts are going to look like the Fifth Circuit by the end of his second term, um, because Trump has been very consistent in picking only radicals. He is not going to pick any moderates. He has a very careful vetting machine in the Federalist Society and the Heritage Foundation. He's not going to make any mistakes by appointing moderates. It's all going to be judges like James Howe. And I, I say to folks, when they wonder why McConnell and some of the Republicans abide by some of the actions and the scandals by this president, it's because of exactly what you wrote about. He got the judges he's been waiting a whole career for. Uh, the president doesn't even know their names. They get vetted, they put in front, and he says, tell me where to sign, and he's getting it. Uh, excellent reporting. Mark, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me on. And up next, as President Trump reshapes the court's money and the media, making seismic changes in our entire political process. After this quick break, we'll be joined by an author who's been investigating this for years. She'll join us to discuss her new book on the very subject.